Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE revision video. This is 32 days to go to your GCSE Mavs exam and today we're going to be looking at equipment, so what equipment you're going to be using in your GCSE Mavs exam and also just some tips in terms of preparation. So there's 32 days to go. If you've been going through these videos, these hundreds of days to go videos, I really, really hope you find them useful. And today we're going to be focused on equipment. Now, one of the things that students do whenever they get a GCSE maps paper, even myself included, once we read our center number and candidate number on the front, we can quickly turn over and we just start. But actually, if you take a moment to actually look at the front of the exam paper, it actually tells you some useful information. So whether you're doing SEA, whether you're doing LXL or Pearson, OCR, AQA, there's some key information on the front of that paper. One of the key things on all of them, and actually start off with pens to begin with, is it tells you to use black ink. So use a black ballpoint pen. I don't use a gel pen or anything like that. I highly recommend a black ballpoint pen, something like this, uh, called a Mavs pen, black called Mavs pen, which would be really useful. Um, also just a normal black pen. I would typically bring three or four pens into the exam with me. Also in terms of the pens that I'm gonna be using in my GCSE exam papers, I also tend to want to use them in lessons in the build up to the exams in terms of getting used to that pen, make sure you know how it writes. I buy a few of them so I've got some spares and so on. So I would say get used to the pen you're going to be using. It's got to be black ink, black ballpoint pen. And I would say, you know, have quite a few pens with you because as you go through the exams, you're going to be doing lots and lots of writing. So the more pens you've got, the better. Um, I not like a hundred of them, but, you know, bring in sort of five, ten pens with you just so you've got loads and loads of those black pens that would be useful for the exam. Now, students will often ask me, why can we not use red ink or why can we not use blue ink and so on? And it's to do with whenever the exam papers are scanned, the black ink shows up better whenever the exam papers are scanned. So that's why the exam papers, if we have a look at AQA, it says use black ink or black ballpoint pen. So I tend to lean towards the black ballpoint pen. I don't want to use like a fountain pen or anything like that. Um, in terms of OCR, use black ink. In terms of Pearson LXL, it says here use black ink or ballpoint pen. And likewise for C, it says complete in black ink only. So I would say a black ballpoint pen, have a several of them, but they're, they'll be quite useful for you in terms of getting ready for your exams, making sure you've got those. Okay, next so we've talked about pens. Let's now talk about pencils. I tend to bring quite a few pencils in the exam with me. I like to have the pencils with the rubber on the end because then I can obviously rub out and so on. And then sometimes Sometimes those rubbers are quite good actually. But uh, pencils, HB pencils, uh, don't bring in a H pencil or a 2H or a B pencil and so on. Um, so HB pencils, I, and if we look at the front of the exam papers, OCR do specify I use in a HB pencil. Um, I just think those HB pencils are just better in terms of they're not too light and they're not too dark. So have HB pencils in the exams. And I would say bring a few in so you've got spare ones. You know, for instance, if one breaks, I would then probably just, like if the nib breaks or falls out, the lead falls out, I'd just grab another pencil and carry on rather than having to sharpen it. So I would would sort of bring several of those pencils in the exam with me on obviously in terms of pencils if you're doing graphs so you know what if all the lids break do bring a sharpener just in case so that you can sharpen the pencils you know hopefully you've got quite a few spares so you won't need to sharpen in the exam but if you do need to sharpen have a sharpener just in case and also make sure you've got a rubber i tend to as I said use the rubbers on the end of the pencils but do have a good rubber as well <laughs> sorry this is the only rubber i could find in the house it's a bit messy i wouldn't bring this one into the exam but in terms of a rubber get a good rubber some rubbers can be actually they actually, they actually make it worse whenever you start rubbing out they can actually make the page look worse than whenever you started so actually make sure that you get some good rubbers the ones in the wee tins um, i sometimes find quite useful um also just just sort of look around and make sure that you've got a good rubber that you know in case you need to make a you know, correction on the paper that you've got those rubbers and in terms of your working out so on make sure that obviously doing your writing on the paper and pen but whenever it comes to your graphs and charts and things like that you need to draw do use your pencil for those graphs and diagrams, loci, scatter graphs, things like that in terms of drawing things. Always do it in pencil in case you need to rub it out and to correct it. For instance, a line of best fit. You don't want to be doing a line of best fit in pen and then realize, sugar, that's in the wrong place and then need to change it. So do use a uh, pencil in terms of graphs and charts and constructions. Then anything that you'd be drawn, use your pencil for those. Okay, so we've talked about pens. We've talked about pencils and rubbers and sharpeners. Okay, next, rulers. In terms of rulers, I, I tend to prefer the longer 30 centimeter ruler than the smaller ones. Obviously, if you've got a 15 centimeter ruler and you need to measure something that's quite short, then by all means, bring it with you in the exam and use it. Um, I do like to, to bring a larger one in just in case, what if you need to measure something that's 17 centimeters or 18 centimeters? So I do like to bring in a 30 centimeter ruler as well. So again, I would bring in a couple of those and a couple of those. So, so far in my pencil case, I've got maybe about four or five black pens. I've got four or five pencils. I've got two rubbers. I've got a pencil sharpener, perhaps two pencil sharpeners. I've got a couple of rulers just so that I make sure I've got everything and um, so yep that's that's what I've got so far um, also then we've talked about rulers in terms of then protractors you're going to need a protractor in the exam because you may need to measure angles um, or draw angles or even do bearings and things like that 
I do bring a 180 degree protractor in the exam with me. Uh, and in terms of 180 degree protractor, that's the one that I would tend to use a lot for measuring acute angles and things like that. So 180 degree protractors are quite useful. But also I tend to like bringing in a 360 degree protractor as well. The reason I like this one is particularly with bearings. I like to have one of those in the exam with me as well, a 360 degree protractor. So in terms of protractors, make sure you've got a protractor with you. Um, I bring both in, but you know, if you've got that one, that will be good enough in terms of, you know, you can do measuring your angles if you do need to do a bearing bigger than 180 you can do 180 and then turn it around and then do it the other way and so on so you can use that that's in terms of whenever i sat my teacher as a student i just had one of those but now as a teacher i tend to like using this one as well i like to have one of each just so that perhaps if i need to measure a reflex angle i've got it in terms of drawing a bearings question i've got it i actually find it quite handy sometimes for pie charts but if you've got one of these by all means that's fun that's good enough so protractors Okay, next, pair of compasses. So obviously not the things that say north, east, south, west, uh, but your things are drawn circles. In terms of pair of compasses, make sure that it's tightened, make sure it's something that you've used in class and you're confident in terms of using it. I do have a favorite pair of compasses. This is it here. I've actually keep the pencil in it. I don't actually take the pencil in and out. That stays in my uh, pair of compasses so that I don't need to mess around with that in the exam. And I've got these for drawing um you know lines and angles and things like that so i tend to use a separate pencil and just keep a pencil in my pair of compasses so i don't need to ever take it out um obviously sometimes i need to sharpen it but I, I tend to just keep it in there because it's just ready to go i can then draw my circle or do my constructions questions with my pair of compasses um as i said make sure it's tightened you know so if it's too wobbly or loose speak to your teacher they might have the kit to tighten it for you uh, i think it's just a little uh, screwdriver in case you need to tighten it but you know perhaps your teacher can do it for you i like to bring in two just in case um again and uh, as you can tell, I like to go into the exam with a bit more equipment than needed. Um, and so a pair of compasses, you're going to need those as well. So, so far, we've got your black pens, a couple of them, or a few of them. You've then got your pencils, HB pencils. Um, if you've got the ones with the rubber on top, fantastic. A rubber sharpener, obviously bringing a few pencils in. A rubber sharpener. We've got our rulers, either a 15 centimeter or 30 centimeters, if you just want to make sure you're ready for in case there's a longer line in there as well. Uh, protractor, the 180 degrees one is fantastic, but if you've got a 360 one as well, you can obviously bring both of those in with you. A pair of compasses, ideally make sure it's tightened, and if you've got your pencil in it and ready to go, fantastic. Okay, so that's the equipment so far, and you're gonna need to bring that to all your maths exams. Now in terms of your calculator, so you're gonna have calculator papers and non-calculator papers, and depending on which exam board you're sitting, if you're sitting AQA or LXL Pearson, you'll find that you've got a non-calculator paper first, and then you've got your calculator papers after it. If you're doing OCR, you've got a calculator paper, then a non-calculator paper, then a calculator paper. If you're doing CA, uh, you obviously depends on what modules you're doing, whether it's calculator or non-calculator. So make sure you know whether it's a calculator or a non-calculator exam. I tend to just have my calculators in my school bag anyway. I notice there's like calculators there, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but I tend to put my calculators in my school bag anyway. And then obviously then whenever it's a non-calculator exam, I just leave the calculator in my school bag and put that wherever the, you know, the examiners tell me where to leave my school bag. Okay, now in terms of calculator, it's important that you've got a scientific calculator for your GCSE maps exam because you're gonna to need to be doing things like your square root, cube root, uh, your brackets, your fractions, your sine, your cos, your tan, things like that. So it's important you've got a scientific calculator and you're confident in terms of using it. So I'm guessing obviously with 32 days to go to your GCSE maps exam, you've probably got a scientific calculator that you you can use them from the beginning of the GCSE maths course. Your teacher may have recommended a particular model for you to get and to use, and you've probably been using that model in classes and so on. And if you've got any questions in regards to your calculator, I'd highly recommend going to your teacher about it and asking your teacher just any particular calculator questions you've got. It might be that your calculator should display in your answers in a particular format, perhaps it's shown as a decimal and you want it to always show as a fraction to begin with and so on. Should your teacher be able to help you change the modes and show you how to convert between fractions and decimals and things like that on your calculator? So I'd highly recommend one, make sure that you're using the center of a calculator that you've been using the whole way through your GCSE course. If you want to bring a spare calculator in, I would highly recommend you get the spare of the same model. So if you've got maybe an older brother and sister or a younger brother and sister or a friend in a year below or a year above, and they've got a spare calculator of the same type, bring that one in as your spare and so on. Um, but if you've got any uh, calculator questions, make sure that you ask your teacher about it. And also make sure that on that non-calculator day that you keep that calculator in your bag, you don't bring it to your exam, okay? So make sure you've got your scientific calculators whenever you need them. Um, so obviously we've gone for your pens, your pencils, your rubbers, your sharpeners, your rulers, your protractors, your compasses, a pair of compasses, um, have I forgotten anything, your scientific calculators. Okay, and another thing I wanna to talk to you about is tracing paper. 
So tracing paper is really useful in terms of particularly doing rotation questions in the GCSE maths exam, and you can get it from the invigilators. So whenever you're in your GCSE maths exam, if you get to a rotations question, you can put your hand up and ask the invigilators for some tracing paper. You could, if you wanted to, put your hand up whenever you go in and sit down at the beginning of the exam and ask for it before it begins. And actually, that's what I used to do. I used to put my hand up and ask for the tracing paper before it started, just so that I had it in case I needed it. I didn't want to get to the rotations question, then put my hand up and have to wait for the invigilator. So sometimes I used to just ask the invigilators before it began, you know, hi, could I please have some tracing paper uh, before the exam starts? Even just speak to your maths teacher. Now, there's 32 days to go speak to the, your maths teacher and just sort of ask them, make sure that the invigilators will have that tracing paper ready for you if you need it. Okay, so just to recap, make sure you've got black ballpoint pens to use in the exams. Make sure you've got HP pencils. I, you know, I use the ones with the rubbers on the end. Make sure you've got a rubber in case you need it. Sharpener in case you're several HP pencils, all the nibs breaking all of them. I tend to bring sort of quite a few of them in so that hopefully if one goes, then I can just lift up another pencil. And make sure you've got your protractors. I tend to use, bring in both a 180 degree and a 360, but the 180 degree is enough if you've got that. Um, pair of compasses, make sure you bring in your pair of compasses. I bring in a pair of pair of compasses, two pairs of compasses. Um, I put my pencil in, in one already. Make sure you've got your scientific calculator, the one that your teachers recommended for you to use in the GCSE Maths exam, and the one you've been using the whole way through your GCSE Maths course, so you're confident with it. Um, also make sure that you're, you know the arrangements in terms of getting tracing paper in the exam as well. Oh, did I mention rulers? Make sure you've got your 30 centimeter and your 15 centimeter rulers if you want them. And um, so make sure you've got your ruler as well. So, okay, now another thing I just want to mention now is in terms of preparation, there's 32 days to go, so you probably now do loads and loads and loads of past papers. Today, I'm not going for a particular topic. So if you need to spend some time today, getting together some past papers, maybe get yourself a folder, print out a load of past papers, hole punch them and have a load of past papers in a folder ready for you to do in terms of your preparation between now and the exam. That'll be a good use of your time. So I would say make sure you've got a folder, you've got a collection of loads and loads of GCSE past papers to be working through, okay? Um, so we've got those GCSE past papers to be really useful, obviously you're using the exam board that you're gonna be doing, so make sure you've got those past papers ready. If you do need any extra past papers, if you go to corpmaths.com and you go to the GCSE revision section, you've got the ultimate GCSE revision video. So that's a revision video that goes through the whole of the GCSE maths course. There's a video for higher and a video for foundation. And there's also an accompanying booklet and that has a question on every single topic as you go through the video. So that'll be a really useful resource in terms of practicing every single topic. Also, there's the bit of everything in the credit papers. So the bit of everything papers are papers on that same page or on that GCSE revision uh, page that has a GCSE question or a GCSE style question on every single topic of the GCSE maths course. So that'll be really useful for you as well. Another thing I want to mention is, uh, obviously, if you've got the revision card, the foundation revision cards will be really useful for you at this stage. It's 32 days to go, so you can be going through, making sure you're confident with all the topics and doing the practice questions and checking your answers. There's the GCSE foundation. There's the GCSE higher. And also, if you're doing level two forever maths, AQA level two forever maths, there's the level two forever maths revision cards as well. So they'll be all fantastic resources for you in terms of revising for your GCSE maths exam. And one last thing I want to mention is, if you're revising for your GCSE higher exam, you're doing your five a days, and I highly recommend at this point you're probably doing 15 a day, so three versions of them, the foundation plus the higher and the higher plus five a day. So that'd be really useful for you in terms of revising for your GCSE higher exams. And if you're revising for GCSE foundation, I highly recommend you're doing your numeracy five a days, your foundation five a days, and also your foundation plus five a days. So hopefully this video has been useful for you in terms of going through the equipment that you need, making sure you've got a black pen, black ballpoint pens, and several of them. Make sure you've got your HP pencils, and again, several of them. And um, hopefully it's been useful in terms of tips, in terms of your protractors, the fact you can use a 180 or a 360 degree protractor, talking about the compasses, keeping your pencil in your pair of compasses, make sure it's tightened and ready to use. Um, obviously in terms of the calculator, so it's been useful in terms of talking about the calculators that you should use, the one that you've been recommended to use, and been using in your lessons and also if it's been useful in terms of the tracing paper and we make uh, you know in terms of you know you're entitled to it you can put your hand up and maybe ask for it at the beginning before the exam starts so you don't have to wait for it if you get to that question and then finally in terms of preparation past papers be doing loads and loads of past papers at this point be doing your five a days at this point and the revision cards will be useful for you as well so guys i just want to say it's 32 days to go to gcc maths exam keep up the hard work you're doing incredibly well and i'll see you tomorrow for 31 days to go to gcc maths exam cheers bye